Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Arlington School Committee for September 4th, 19, excuse me, 2014. I want to apologize for the late start. We're on our second night on technology, going paperless, and uh, we need to get everybody up and running. I would like to welcome the committee and uh, the town back. I hope you all had a wonderful summer and a safe one. Um, at this time, uh, I would like to extend our deepest condolences to Cindy Bovier on the death of her brother, Robert Haven III, Linda Kaita, Monotomy Preschool, on the death of her father, Hugo Bertolami, Joanne Holton on the death of her mother, to David Moore upon the death of his mother, Ruth Moore, Pam Monahan, uh, an ELL teacher, on the death of her father, Francis Patrick Monahan, former Arlington School Committee teacher Mary Ann. Uh, principal passed away earlier this month. Mary Ann was a reading teacher in Arlington from 1993 until retirement in 2011. And the passing of Mrs. Mary Nagaheli, I apologize if I mispronounced it, a retired traffic supervisor. I'd like a moment of silence, please. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I had the pleasure uh, a, week and a, a week ago less this past Monday of welcoming the new staff, uh, which was really exciting. Uh, once again, I found out how old I was, thinking these were all brand new teachers and only a few were new. Uh, others were transferred. And on Wednesday, welcoming the entire staff back uh, with an exciting and busy year. Um, tonight is the second, again, the second night using uh, the computers and going paperless. Uh, Mr. Good will be assisting uh, all of us during the night and our secretary. Uh, there will be more information later on during committee uh, reports. Uh, I want to share with you uh, what's going on. Uh, it's going to be a very busy year, so let's begin. Uh, let's see. Uh, at this time, we have public participation, but before we start, as we do each year on the first meeting, uh, we basically go over the rules, uh, and I'm going to be paraphrasing our policy. Uh, I would like to remind all those who speak tonight and subsequent nights that the policy of the sec school committee is to set this time for the public to make comment or to make announcements. This time is governed by our policy BEDH found in the school website. All remarks are to be addressed through the chair. Speakers may offer such objective criticisms of the school operations and programs as concern them, but in public session, the committee will not hear personal complaints of the school personnel nor against members of the school community. Under most circumstances, administrative channels are the proper means for the dispossession of the limit legitimate complaints involving staff members. Again, I'm paraphrasing from our uh, policy. Uh, right now, the only person we have uh, on the list is Mr. Mr. Eldahari. I would ask you to come uh, sit at the table. And I would ask you to direct your speaking directly into the microphone so it can be recorded. Mr. Chairman, with your permission, I would like my son to be present uh, in spirit with right us. Ahead. For those who don't know him, here he is. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the committee. <clears throat> Thank you for agreeing to meet with us, Sami's mother, Francine and I, his father, Monsef, today, and to give us a chance to address his committee. Please have the patience to allow us the proper time to bring, some cert to bring certain important facts to your knowledge and, at and attention <clears throat> concerning a high, uh, high school teacher who happened to be also our son and whose life ended a few weeks ago. Please be assured that our request to meet with the committee does not stem from a desire of revenge or vindication. Sami would not have wanted that. But he would have wanted you to know what his last years at the high school have been. 
as well as the circumstances that led to his employment contract not being renewed after the school year 13-14. Sammy graduated from the high school in 2006 and was hired as a permanent substitute Spanish teacher for 2006-2007 school year and subsequently as a Spanish teacher, teacher in the foreign language department starting September 4th, 2007. <coughs> a review of Sami's early professional career at the school, the high school. We clearly indicate that the first four years of his young career showed a teacher totally dedicated to his responsibilities, successful in his professional life, and who never, never were the subject of any negative assessment or criticism on the part of any member of the administration in place at the time regarding his professional conduct and performance. To the contrary, these early years helped him build a solid reputation of a good and successful educator in the Spanish language, always available and ready to help those of his students in need of it. All along, many students and parents have testified to this fact and have expressed in many ways their sincere gratitude to our son. In addition to being a teacher, Sami was perceived by many of his students as being a true role model and an inspiration for their own future life. We have in our possession numerous evidence in the form of messages, letters, etc., received from students as well as parents attesting to this reality. The appointment of a new director of world language in the school year 2011-12 at the school changed all of that. After a first year of favorable evaluation, it progressively moved into an unexplained and systematic condescension towards him and finally led to a constant flow of criticism and disrespect for his performance, has shown his many confusing quote-unquote evaluation reports, seriously affecting his self-esteem and his personal dignity. Surprise visits observation to his classroom followed scheduled once, clear intrusions in the middle of Sami practices, interrupting his discourse with his students, addressing them directly, expressing some blatant critical remark in front, in front of his students, etc., etc., all sign of an unethical and unprofessional conduct on the part of a superior towards his staff. This routine started as early in November 2011, and Sami became the subject of one observation and evaluation session after another. December 8, 2011, March 2012, May 10, 2012, September 25, 2012, and finally May 15, 2014, most of these sanctions sanctioned by low grading of his performance and repeated needs improvement, quote unquote, statements, blended with the acknowledgement that his highly fluent na native Spanish and his cl classroom management skill and his positive professional response to any suggestion, et cetera, et cetera. Then our question is, why all this long drawn out dragging of the mud, in the mud, of a respected member of the uh, high school committee? For what purpose? Demonstrate a selfish hunger for authority above your staff? Inflict <coughs> unjustified pain and stress related to your own satisfaction? or probably advance your own career by proving how good you are to unearth the so-called weakness of others. If there are any cause of a justifiable concern on the part of a superior for the performance of a subordinate, why not choose, choosing a professional and fair approach? Why not referring to an existing system, quote unquote, mandated by the state? Why not coach instead of passing judgment and condemning? Early 2004, we were extremely concerned. We were, Francine and I, 
were extremely concerned about the changes in Zami normal attitude and spirit. He finally confessed to us that he had been officially informed by letter dated May 27, 2014, after months of confusing discussion and deceptive promises of the decision by Arlington High School administration to definitely not renew his employment contract in plain English, the decision to lay him off at the end of the school year. While this saga unfolded, Sami never ceased during all this time to be under tremendous stress, which was particularly dangerous and alarming in the context of the syndrome he was suffering from. Many among his student colleagues and the school administrator knew of his lifelong struggle with several episodes of physical pain. But what they did not know of Sami was his tenacity and courage to live with unrelented pain and simul simultaneously to never fail to meet his professional obligation. Let me, let me continue. Realizing that Sami's situation, certainly his health, were deteriorating, I decided to alert Mr. Janger in May 2014 of our serious concern. I did write a letter dest destined to him, which I did not send at the request of Sami, who was concerned about the retribution it might have created, and his hope until the last moment that the school would reverse his decision and offer him a position in the school. I apologize for letting my emotion. It's all right. As early as 2012, I placed a call to Mrs. Mary Villano, at the time acting principal at, at the school, to express my great concern for the unjustified amount of stress and harassment Sami was subjected to. Mrs. Villano reassured me at the time that everything was done to resolve the situation and that discussion with the high school administration would resolve, quote unquote, this issue. The following two years of Sami's life at the school proved her to be unfortunately wrong and, his, and this situation turned to end in a most tragic manner. Yes, Sami did allow his teaching license to expire and failed to renew it on time. Not only was he the one who immediately acknowledged his lapsus memory, but he was the first one to inform the principal of the school as well as the HR department of this situation. You are certainly acquainted with the option given to any public school to file a waiver with the State Department of Education allowing any concerned teacher who had allowed his pre preliminary license to expire to be allowed to carry his teaching practice to the end of the academic school year and at the same time enlist in and complete successfully a class measure program within the allowable maximum nine months duration. This option was confirmed to Sami while personally visiting the Mass Department of Education where he was told that his situation was not uncommon <coughs> And all what the school, health school, would have to do was to file a waiver in accordance with the state regulations. In fact, no waiver was ever filed by the school for reason unexplained at this time, giving the administration, the school administration, a resolute free hand for the disposition, quote unquote, of a Sami's case. As a matter of fact, the first decision taken by the school administration was to immediately demote him to full-time substitute teacher, a sanction leading to the critical loss of his tenure, which you all know the importance and the meaningful standing. Sanction which translate into fulfilling the same previous responsibility, but with a cut in salary. Then came the gathering of meeting <coughs> attended by the uh, uh, school superintendent, the Arlington Education Association representative, and a doomed, quote unquote, individual, Sammy, totally overwhelmed by the tremendous, tremendous stress of a situation and incapable of defending himself and not realizing that the dice were cast. Sammy had no other choice than accepting the terms of an agreement 
which had all the feature of a verdict trial. Sorry. The inclusion of a confidential clause clearly demonstrated the concern of the administration to keep this agreement under wraps and away from public scrutiny. With this unusual, with this usual attitude and resolution that have dominated all his life, Sami successfully met his challenge, and within the only four months allowed by the high school administration and a successful class measure program, he recovered his mass department, his mass department of education teaching license, officially renewed on February 11, 2014, and how allowing him to requalify as a Spanish teacher in Massachusetts. As a result of this, Sami was reinstated in his original position as full-time teacher at the school, but solely for the remaining on school year 2013-2014. Mr. Jenger is not here today with you, but I would have uh, certainly reminded him uh, that uh, uh, he sent Sami his congratulations when he heard of the good news of Sami's success in, with his measure, class measure. Sami has left his word, and particularly high school, with his head high and the sincere conviction of having accomplished with great endeavor and success a difficult and unique mission As his parents, we are both totally convinced that the decision not to renew his employment contract was totally unjustified, confusing, and sincerely immoral. This decision will never be disassociated from his demise, and we remain a disgrace in the annal of the high school. Contrary to what some have conveniently ins insisted, in stating that Sami died after a brief, brief illness, I want to repeat the reality is that Sami died from the result of a syndrome that had tormented along his short life precipitated and hastened by the long and sustained stress carelessly applied on him, particularly and during the last two years of his teaching career at the high school. Ladies and gentlemen, until the last moment of his presence at the school, Sami was suggested without rhyme or reason to humiliation, humiliation and discredit on the part of the HAD administration. The two following cases in point, among others, will substantiate this statement. The decision by the head of his department, the head of the department, language department, to eliminate Sami from distribution lists of internal communication while he was still active, while he was still an active member of the school <coughs> teaching staff. Two, Sami was voted by the student to deliver the 2014 graduation speak speech, surprisingly rewarded to another <coughs> teacher by the school superintendent. Or one can easily imagine how much this incentive ruling meant to him in terms of disappointment and stress. He was denied the privilege to end his professional career with the school with the mutual relationship he had shared with his students and the appreciation he received as their educator but bestowing a teacher on the skids, quote unquote, with the honor of delivering a graduation speech was simply inadmissible, inadmissible for the school and it was not going to happen. The, uh, this insensitive decision may have been the last nail in his coffin. Destiny has decided that Sami would depart before the end of the 2013-14 school year. His unexpected and sudden demise 
denied the fully deserved shame and embarrassment for those responsible for the, his unjustified and indignified layoff and his un untimely departure for the menacing crowds of discredit. Though those of you who were able to attend on June 24 his memorial service at the lower auditorium of the school, to whom Francine and I want to express our sincere appreciation, were given the opportunity to discover the legacy that our son left behind him. Sammy was an asset to the school, to the high school, Arlington High School. to Arlington High School and to Lexington High School, as well as both communi communities, communities. Rest in peace, my son. You have finally been heard. <laughs> Thank you for your attention and patience. I wish to convey our condolences from the entire school committee. <coughs> this time we'll be moving on to the next element on the agenda, which is special education mid-year review. And Dr. Body would like to. Well, I, I also echo our condolences as, as we have in the past. And it, it, it's a great loss. Um, why don't I hold the opening day remarks until we get into a more full report of that. Um, we have members of the uh, special education <coughs> department here and I want to also at this time um, recognize Allison Elmer, who this is her first, as our new director, it's her first meeting uh, at the Arlington um, the Arlington School Committee. We welcome you. And we have Kathleen Lockyer. I don't know if all of you are going to come up and, and join. Oh. So you, you all know Kathleen Lockyer, who has who's served for the last three years as our interim director, and Ben Helfat, who is the secondary coordinator at the middle school and actually also does all of the data uh, coordination for the department. Um, they're here today to present to you the results of the mid-cycle review and before they do that, which is actually a very positive news, um, I, I want to congratulate the whole department um, and as well as all the administrators and teachers um, that have worked so closely to improve the way that we, um, we meet all, all our compliance obligations. Um, the, the results of the mid-cycle review, and in 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 not that I want to steal their thunder at all, but was extremely positive. The, 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 uh, they'll explain the whole process, but we had um, representatives coming from the Department of Education to audit um, what we had done on as, as part of the plan from our coordinated program review the previous two years and they, they 
could not have been more positive. Uh, flying colors with absolutely everything. One small thing that we need to adjust in our IEP meetings, but we're, we're absolutely could not have been more um, uh, congratulatory to the department. And so, I, in turn, I acknowledge all their work. This is just a, a tremendous result. So I'll let you now. Now that I've sort of spilled the beans, I'll let Allison give a little bit more we're of a detail finished. of this. She said, she said it all. Mm -hmm. um, actually, um, you know, it's appropriate that Kathleen is up here because it's really the work that um, Kathleen and her leadership, as well as Dr. Bodhi said, the um, staff in the schools who really are responsible for this report. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, the DESE conducts, um, as she said, an audit every six years. They'll be, do a coordinated program review, and then in the interim at the three-year mark, they do a mid-cycle review. So this mid-cycle review, um, looked at 25 different criteria and in doing that assessment they found that 24 of them were to be implemented um, and there was only one cri criteria that was partially implemented so there was nothing that was not happening um, but there was one small area that we'll get to in a minute um, but what I think really um, stood out is that the evaluator, evaluator um, noted the amazing work that the district had done to correct stuff that had happened in the past at the previous um, full cycle um, review and that it was really quite remarkable for a district who had a significant amount of work to do in the past to have made such progress in, in such a short period of time. Um, and as I said, this is really the work of um, Ms. Lockyer and the rest of her team. The areas that they highlighted um, as being implemented and, and that we did a very nice job with, um, routinely providing educational assessment information in team meetings by general education and special education providers, um, routine use of the specific learning disability forms um, for students suspected of having a specific learning disability, routine use of an autism checklist, which is a newer criteria that a lot of districts still aren't doing, um, and uh, we have that system in place for um, students who are identified on the autism spectrum, providing parents with the assessment summaries at least pr two days prior to the meeting. Um, and in sometimes many the requirements two days, but in many cases they, they receive it well before that. Um, obtaining written excusal for any absent team member. This is some of the minutia of what we're required to do. Um, but meeting all the timelines um, for consents, testing, holding meetings, as well as um, I, I think is a, a good sign is providing a clear general education plan for students who are not found eligible. So when a student isn't found el eligible for special education services, we're not simply turning them back to the general education saying it's your problem to deal with. We're providing well thought out um, plans to support those students even if they aren't eligible for special ed services. Um, consistently producing our progress reports as well as documenting um, instances of bullying with an action plan. Um, some more of our paperwork that was really um, comprehensive um, as well as providing translation to families who need it both written and um, verbal so whether at a meeting or translation of all the documents that are required um, may take this for granted but general educator attendance at all meetings doesn't happen in all districts and this is something that we um, do well and they noted that as well um, also including assistive technology discussions at the team meetings um, and also working with students in the community who may not come to Arlington High School, but we still have a responsibility for their special education services, whether they're enrolled in a parochial school or that and they're eligible, so meeting the needs of those students as well. Um, as we mentioned, there is one area which we need to um, do a little bit of work on, um, and we'll be following up with the state in October. Um, it's producing a notice and plan for parents who want to discontinue special ed services. So when um, a student who has been receiving services and a parent no longer wants to receive those services we have some work to do around how we um, establish a plan for um, discontinuing that student given a certain timeline and so we'll be doing that work and they'll be reviewing it in October and again in January um, I don't know if you have any specific questions and I think Kathleen if you wanted to say anything or Ben I think um the only thing I'd say, it, and Kathy spoke to this in her opening remarks, you know, it, it certainly, it, I, I'm very happy about the report. We were pleasantly surprised because you never really know how someone will view things. Um, we knew that we had done a good, you know, a very good job responding to the issues and we kept in close contact with Desi on some of these um, 
you know, some of the forms that we implemented and so forth. But I really just want to stress it's the whole department. It's team meetings happen at each building. They happen chaired by a number of different people across the district. There's, uh, we worked hard on informing staff about you know, how they could conduct themselves, what they need to bring forth. So it really is every single person in the department, you know, it, they own a piece of this progress. I think one thing that I just want to note quickly is that when we came here uh, talking about our coordinated program review, uh, Ms. Villani really talked a lot about the idea that there's underlying things that we need to work on, which is what these all link to. And I think one of the things the evaluator saw was that's actually what's, what we're doing right, which is why all of these things have moved forward the way they have. So one of those being things like communication within the district and with parents and with the general ed staff, and that just being one example. But he really pointed to we're not looking at the procedural piece. We're looking at the underlying problems and how we can solve those. So he was very impressed with that piece. So I do want to bring that up as well. Any members have any questions? Yeah, I just have a question. Um, so three years ago, um, how many of the criteria were not considered fully implemented? 26. Oh, okay. And is it 26 out of 26, or out was there 40 or something? 59, that, I 59, think 59 right okay. now there is. They add some. So this was the 25 or 26 that we hadn't Correct. fully implemented? And Okay, I, now as I understand. As well as new ones. Okay. Actually, I just have one more question. How many um, people do choose to discontinue special ed services? I mean, is it? It's not a large number. It's not a large number. I'd imagine it wouldn't be very large. In fact, they asked to pull records, and there weren't any available because mm. there wasn't anyone currently doing that at the okay. time. OK. Thanks. Ms. Starks, any questions? Nope. All set. Mr. Schlickman. Uh, I'm uh, impressed by the way you were able to uh, hit do well on all the uh, required measures. It indicates a lot of work to get from a coordinated pro uh, program review to the, the findings we have here before us. And having been on the business end of a coordinated program review, uh, I understand the efforts and c congratulate you for the work. Thank you. Dr. Allison? Yeah. Congratulations. Mm. Congratulations. Great job. I missed the presentation. I'm sorry to step out for something. but. Um, so what's the strategy to make sure that we continue to meet all of the, the marks going forward? I mean, I certainly, I certainly have my opinion on that, which is that we continue to really think about those underlying issues. Um, I think we can always think about the minutia of it, and a lot of these points are minutia, but the reality is once we start having things flowing correctly in those underlying issues, the minutia come much quicker and people are able to implement things much more. And a good example of that, again, I'm going to use communication. As we communicate more, that, that um, part that we are partially implemented on, as we communicate more about how we're working with families about coming off an IEP, the better that's going to come. It's all about these underlying issues in my mind. And I think they established um, procedures, a lot of procedures and practices that are just now routine at this point. It may have mm -hmm. taken three years, but now, and I can tell you coming in as a new person that they are routine because people can tell me, oh, this is what we do for this. And so I think that was what will continue a lot of mm -hmm. the practices that they noted. Mm -hmm. often, the, often the thing is setting up good systems and then mm -hmm. things and just that, continue. That actually was the point that um, when I first came here, Dr. Bodhi and myself and Laurie Villani, who was here at the time, went to the State Department, and that's what they talked about, is in a large district like Arlington, it's really difficult to maintain practices that are effective, and they had seen Arlington have effective practices and have things slide. So <coughs> I think we've spent three years really building, and you have supported it. That's the important thing to say. Dr. Bodhi and the school committee has supported building much more infrastructure support and knowledge in every school. And I think that's how it's going to be sustained. It's not from an office on the sixth floor. Right. Thank you. I, too, would like to congratulate you, and I would ask you to take back to the entire staff uh, our gratitude for the work, not only well done, but well done in a very timely manner. Got a couple of questions. Is this report currently online on our webpage? Awesome. Uh, on our webpage, maybe not. We'll put that up right away. Thank it's you. available at the other That's great. Um, <clears throat> when they do these reviews, are there questions 
asked to the parents and things of that nature. Are they involved in any of this? Um, in the coordinated program review, they are in the mid-cycle. Um, they only use the documentation that is present. And <clears throat> uh, what privacy safeguards do we have in place when we upload uh, <coughs> private records and things of that nature? It's done through a secured system uh, that we've uh, purchased to do IEP work as well as um, all the evaluations. Great. How many languages besides English are we dealing with right now? Do you know offhand? I don't know offhand. Carla had a number last year. Um, I don't have the answer for you, but I can tell you that there are many, <coughs> and they are languages that are not as easily translated as something like French or Spanish. Is this something that we will be seeing an increase in the budget uh, requests like that? Okay. Uh, if you if you have to translate, um, you know, pages of I, nine. I understand. <laughs> We haven't found the, the optimum system yet to do it automatically. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any other questions? Again, thank you very much for that. And please pass it on to the entire staff. Uh, it's, I re we all realize it's a coordinated effort. I would also like to recognize Jill Parkin, who I did earlier, who is one of our elementary coordinators that you, who you met last year. Um, so. By the way, I think the answer is, uh, for languages is something in the neighborhood between 50 and 60. Right, that's what I would have no. said. Just curious. Mm -hmm. I, mean, so I, I, I want the public to know uh, that we're, there's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot. Right, and there, there are some languages <coughs> that are quite actually mm -hmm. obscure that we ended up doing some translation on back last year. So um, we're going to move into the next segment. Before I do that, I have been remiss once more, and I apologize to the AEA representative, uh, Ms. Hansen. Thank you for coming tonight. No. Well, moving into the, um, the next part for their presentation for IDEA, a new regulation that has um, uh, happened this year is that in order for federal funds to be released to a, to a LEA, it's a, a school district, it's uh, necessary that the superintendent, all of the principals, and the chair of the school committee sign off that they understand all of the federal laws regarding um, special education. And there's, it's a significant number of laws. You, you have a lot of that documentation that was sent to you. In fact, the, um, the summary pages of those laws, which were more of an outline, were three pages in themselves. So this evening, uh, it, it would be impossible to do a complete training. I'm gonna turn this over to, to Ben in terms of what we need to do tonight with the, the end goal being that the committee has a motion to allow the chair to sign uh, this, uh, this, um, this statement that, that you were all aware of these laws. So, so Ben? Yeah, of course. Um, so I think the challenge of presenting a document like this to the school committee is that um, it originated, what we received was a 26-page document, which was actually condensed from a 300-page federal document, which I then attempted to condense into a four-page document. <laughs> So that you, you can see the challenge, and this is only the federal regs. Um, when you start taking into the state regs, we're also talking about 10 extra areas on top of the 20 presented here, um, and countless other advisories and case laws. So you can see what the challenge would be to present this document as a whole. What I did want to do um, in light of that is really pinpoint a few areas that I thought were very important for us to um, here and also talk about and then ask if anybody had any further questions. So the four areas that I really wanted to talk about briefly is the first one, which is actually enforcement, which is the reason we're here. The idea is that the, the federal government can withhold the funds based upon enforcement of all di uh, IDA and mass regulations and, and if we don't meet all compliance timelines. That's really the reason behind this report right here. Um, as we start to think about what our obligations are fiscally, we also have to think about our obligations to students. So another area that I thought was really important for you guys to hear is that um, we really are required uh, to provide specially designed instruction to any eligible student at public expense, which would happen in all school settings, access to all school settings, providing service for three to 21-year-old students 
um, whether they are expelled or suspended or not, um, and that the IEP is written for all needs, not just the disability-related needs. And I thought it was important, there's a quotation here that, that might be a little long, but I think it's important to hear, the idea of special ed is not a room, it is all-encompassing. And what they really want to stress is that the school district must consider the effects of students' disability on, among other things, the proper functioning of hearing aids, non-academic services, recess, physical education, assistive technology, extended school day or year services, transportation, counseling and or health services, and program options including art, music, and vocational education. So you can see this is a large scope of what special ed really works with. Um, and as we think about that, I think it's very important that we actually acknowledge that really the overarching principles of where we want to go is thinking about the least restrictive environment. And by that, we really mean that students uh, cannot be removed from general education solely because of the need for modification. The district must provide a continuum of alternative placements to meet the students' needs. And the students have to have access to non-disabled peers as much as possible. And the removal of a student from general education or their home school occurs only if the nature and severity of the disability cannot be met in the general education uh, with any aids that might be provided. Um, and I think that's a really important point, and that's really, as we go through the special ed process, that's really what a lot of our team chairs have in their head. We want to know that we are doing right by the student, doing right by the families. Um, finally, the, the last one that I want to highlight is one that often becomes controversial, and I want to make sure we understand the law around it, which is uh, suspensions and expulsions. Um, mm -hmm. And really, all, it is required that all students uh, receive prior code of conduct, uh, written code of conduct in their native language, which would be our um, handbooks, and that the district maintains the data on suspensions and expulsions of students with disabilities, and really does look into whether there's discrepancies between the suspensions and expulsions of um, students with disabilities as compared to uh, their general ed peers. Um, and then also, uh, really revising that practice as we see fit based upon whether there is that discrepancy. Um, and finally, that uh, when a student is in um, disciplinary action, uh, we are promptly evaluating any students who are currently in referral, and we are providing procedural protections of students who are suspended um, for 10 consecutive or cumulative days, or the suspension con uh, constitutes a pattern, and by that protection, it is a manifestation hearing to see whether the student's disability um, was a manifest, uh, the student's actions were a manifestation of their disability. So those are four key areas that, that uh, myself and Dr. Bodhi thought were really important to highlight, um, but I'm happy to answer questions about any of the areas or the four that, that mm -hmm. I just mentioned. That's, the start. Um, my question is, um, I'm fairly, uh, I'm fairly versed in the IDA laws This is, this is from, this is a 2004 IDA okay, so uh, with 2006 version. commentary. Oh, That's okay. all it is. Oh, so it's not a new version? No, it is just, we have to sign off every few years on the law just stating that we recognize them. This is not, mm -hmm. does not mean there are new laws, it just means that we have to show that we still are current. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. right. Any other members? I don't remember signing initialing this before, so. Uh, I believe this is a new regulation that we need to keep one of these on site. Okay. You're assigned by your cohort year. We're cohort four, and mm -hmm. so districts go through a cycle um, generally every four years. Um, there would be a, a signing off that the policy mm -hmm. and plan had been. So we'll see you back uh, in, four, in 2018. Okay, we'll make the date. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I had a couple questions. Um, I did look through the big long page, which is apparently uh, boiled down from something even bigger. And I just wondered when they, this is on page 10, it says the district states that it does not include as part of its special education child count um, a few things. And then students with disabilities for whom the district has no programmatic responsibility, even if the district has financial responsibility. 
um, it's at the top of the page. Yeah, I see where it yeah. is. I'm just looking. So I'm just, just. Does that mean if there's a student that we're not? I'm trying to understand what those who those students are. Are they ones that they're out of just so they don't count as our students? I, there are situations in which, um, like one <coughs> example would be the move-in law. So we might have a, a family, if they were to move from Arlington into another district after April 1st, we would remain fiscally responsible for them for that school year, but the mm -hmm. other district would have programmatic responsibility, which means they could determine what the student's needs were and whatnot, but we would still have to be so, fiscally okay. responsible. So also that falls under the child fine section, mm -hmm. which means that we are <laughs> obligated to make sure that we are doing our due diligence to locate any students we have any responsibility for whatsoever, whether it be fiscal or programmatic, who are in need of special education services. As we mentioned oh. earlier, those students in parochial schools that might be service only kids, mm -hmm. that we would um, at least be fiscally responsible for them, even if they're not enrolled in our school. Okay. I, I guess I'm just confused. If I'm understanding it correctly, so even if we have to, if we're financially responsible, we don't, we can't list them as a child that we would get money in to help pay for these responsibilities. Okay, so that is, okay. That's exactly right. Uh, yeah, no, I'm like, you got it. Please tell me it's not as, <laughs> but apparently it is. Okay, so that was a, my first question. Um, and then the other one is on page 24. Let me jump to 24. Me. Yeah. Okay. Um, at, this is the first page, and this is, goes back to the language thing. It says that school district states that all students, including students with disabilities, receive prior written notice require, regarding the school's code of conduct as described in the district or school handbook, handbook and that the information provided in English and in their native language, if other than English. And I just want to be sure we're, we're doing this because Again, I haven't seen lots of translation services, and I'm thinking the handbook's pretty big, even if it's just the code of conduct. That's, it. I'm, I'm just hoping that we're doing this. We we are in the process of doing it. They're not entirely complete. Um, first of all, we, we had we decided on the four language, actually five languages. We would do it. You've hit exactly one of the issues is that some of these documents, for example, program of studies, changes. And the cost for translation is enormous, and Google Translator is not really quite adequate. I think last year with one um, individual education plan, what was it, uh, $14 a word? Something, something like that. Um, so it's, it's a significant cost, and this is something many districts are, um, are grappling with as well. But um, the, the imp important documents that are necessary f to be completed, we have done, uh, we, there's a lot, been a lot of sharing among districts, and we also have some of the, the forms from the Department of Education. Yeah. But this is ongoing. This is um, a challenge. I'm not saying it's not important to provide as much as possible in their native language, but it looks like it's just the code of conduct that's especially earmarked that needs to be, so just the part covering no, no, everything is earmarked everything. as translation so that the family and the student can access it. Okay. Um, anything under special okay, so, ed regulations, it okay. pertains to everything. Okay. Um, however, there is a clause as feasibly necess as feasible. Um, mm -hmm. What that means is vague, but that is also part of the clause of and translation is required for any documents so that families and students can access them. Okay. Um, and then the final thing I wanted to ask was if the threat that the federal government is holding over our head if we don't sign this is to take away our money, what, how much money are we talking about? I want to give the exact number. Yeah, I, I know I should be able to find it, but I can't do it. It be all our federal grants. 1.7, I think. 1.7. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I think it's about it's about 1.7, isn't it? Well, it would be the 240, the IDEA grant, specifically. Is that the only one? They wouldn't get you on For this one, one for but this program. It, the um, SPED 94-142 for FY15 is 1328-574. Okay. And the special ed early childhood, which I assume would get zapped as well, would be 40,832. Okay. I, I'm not saying we shouldn't do it. I, I just wanted to know. check. I think your initial thought Usually when the feds say if you don't comply, they mean all federal money. So it may not just be the SPED money that we get. And that's where Ms. Johnson, I think, was going originally. Yeah, I'd say we're like 
1718. Oh. I mean, okay. doing it on the fly here. Okay, no, I just wanted to have a sense partly for the audience outside. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think the clause as is feasible means that they will look at standards, they'll compare you to other districts and see what other, if you're doing something that's a lot, if you're not doing, if you're not meeting, if you're not providing, we're not providing the, the equal translation services as other school districts then there's a concern, isn't that? I mean, it's a more of a practical situation. And it's situation. for very small districts who yeah. may have, you know, one family that moves in. And right. as Dr. Bodie said, a handbook translation can run $10,000, you know? Yeah. So that's why they do have that. Um, I think the only other thing I'd add under the feasibility is if translation is not available, sometimes it's translators are. Right. And you can you know, make appointments for parents to come in and be able to understand what the document is that they have in their hands. And I, you know, I guess the only caution is that we document all those mm -hmm. efforts. Yeah. Um, that's the important piece. And so that would fall under the feasibility. What efforts have we made to right. make sure th those families understand documents that they may not have in their native language? Right. I mean, I think school districts get in trouble if they just completely ignore this. They, you know, you know, say we're not going to, you know, even though 25 or 30 students in the school speak Mandarin or whatever it is, we just can't do it, so that's too bad. I mean, so I don't think that's not the attitude in Arlington. So that's mm -mm. not our. I don't think you this know, is. I think, I think guidance counselors, social workers, principals, all of those people are aware of any families in their buildings yeah. that are unable to access things just through English. Yeah. Um, and I think there's e efforts all the time to yeah. connect them for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to make the motion to oh. vote. Oh, you want me to do it now? You, I was going to say something afterwards, but go ahead. Oh, I'll make the motion then. Okay. So I move that we direct the chair to sign the special education program plan statement. Is that right? Okay. Is that the right thing? Yes, correct. Yeah. Is there all a right. second? Second. Thank End you. of discussion. I'm sorry. No, I'm no, sorry. it's all right. It's all right. <clears throat> That's part of your job to keep me calm. Uh, I just want to make a comment. It's interesting. Most state school boards have regulatory authority. So that's why the chair and the committee is involved. We do not have regulatory authority other than over the superintendent. The superintendent's job is to sign it. One quick question. There's a lot of blank spaces in this document. Are they going to be filled in? A lot of blank spaces. With the one I had, had some, it's, uh, additional notes in any of the relative spaces it had it, it just said additional notes and I didn't see any optional district notes. right I didn't know if there were any plans to do anything there okay and uh, will the document be available for my signature in the next mm -hmm. yeah. I think we may have it, have it here tonight no well I, I can wait till tomorrow All right. <laughs> Sign it. Just sign it. Just we have a motion on the table. Is there any place. further discussion? I second. Yeah. She seconded. Sorry. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous vote. Of, pre of those present. No, I, want, I just want to say one of the things that, that impresses me about the presentation is there's, there there's doesn't seem to be this feeling we're overwhelmed by this, this is too impossible, there's a, there's a goodwill effort to do all this, and that is important in implementation. Well, it's coming on the heels of the mid-cycle Yeah, so it's, <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's sort of mandated. But I mean, I think it's sort of something you just have to sort of accept and own and not complain about, that's all. Yeah. So, and, yeah. and they do a very good job yeah. of that. Yeah. And uh, the principals, actually pretty much the whole administrative team had a much more um, thorough review of all of this, though, though the principals know this because they, they, they are working with their teachers and their special education coordinators and liaisons all the time. Um, but I want to thank, thank Ben for trying to condense what is a voluminous amount of regulation into something that's um, much more understandable. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to be the last thing to you are. Has everyone already signed yes. off? You're the last. If you want me to sign it, I'll sign it now then. No, no I just. Yes. You got, no, no, I, I just wanted the other one. Every, is that the signature paper for everyone? Like 30 no. There, there also it has to be initialed throughout. Sign each page. You have to sign well, each page. Bill, you can't do I'll do it. Up. Thank He's you. Up. Okay. You can do it. Yeah. I take you on your word. I'm sorry. I, I didn't look right. at it. I, I look at the <laughs> screen. It looks different. <clears throat> Are we all ready to move on? Okay. Mm -hmm. Dr. Bodie?
Oh, wait just a second. Let's wait for Ms. Fitzgerald. Uh, I'm going to, uh, it's in this here, so. Mm -hmm. So why don't we go with that? Did you have a presentation, a PowerPoint? No. Is it going to work? Uh, I know this is sort of a. Two, two, I get all the screen. Uh, yeah. Well, we're getting the projector set up. Let me introduce uh, Donna Idson, who, is, who has um, presented here before. Um, she is a director of a community ed program and has been for <coughs> many years, <laughs> 10 years now. <laughs> um, and I have said this before, she is a, a very visionary thinker, but c combines that vision with um, a lot of can-do and great organizational ability. Um, a number of years ago, she came to me with an idea about setting up a summer program called Summer Fund in which we would ha offer week-long um, courses, I guess, or workshops for students. And we did begin that, what was it, five years ago? Mm -hmm. Five. And the first year, I, mean, I, I, I shouldn't give you a report, but I want <coughs> Donna to come this evening and give a report on where we are with Summer Fund, which is an extraordinary success story as well as one of the things that we've also started is the enrichment programs that um, are available for our, our elementary students. So, so Donna? Sure, thanks. Thank you, Al. Um, first thing I want to say is that uh, some of you may not know that community education is completely self-funded, <coughs> mm -hmm. which means that we support ourselves, my salary, all the teachers, all our materials um, through the revenues of the program. That's nothing unusual. That's really how other programs do their work. Uh, I'm going to speak primarily about the youth programming tonight, but I'm just going to give you a sense of where we were, where we are now, and what we're thinking of for the future. So um, here is uh, our staff. And um, so what I really wanted to say about all, every, all of us is that we are um, parents of children who have either graduated from the Arlington Public Schools or oh, are, who are in the public schools now. And um, also Melanie Constantakis Schwartz, who is an, an Arlington High School history teacher, has run our summer fund program since its inception. She's not on our staff, but I wanted to include her. Um, this is when we started out several years ago. Um, this is where we were at with the program. We, had, we offered about uh, 30 classes per term, one to two nights per week, and only adult classes. So um, I was brought in by Kathy, Kathleen Donovan, and she said, have fun with the program. So I think what we really wanted to do from the very beginning was to create a, a program that reflected the vitality of this community. And, um, and this is where we are today. And it's, I think many of you know that our programs, uh, we offer everything from adult education to SAT college prep, driver's ed, and uh, our kids programming. Just an idea of where we've come with our enrollment. Um, we're, we were up to 6,000 enrollments for uh, the, last, the end of the last <coughs> fiscal year. And our revenues have kept pace with that. And this just gives you a sense of how we are organized. And what you can really see here is that though the, our adult education program is probably our signature program, the one that the community most identifies with, the, the prim our primary focus right now is on the development and execution of youth programs. Just quickly, the adult education program, we now offer 200 plus classes per term. We have uh, four terms per year, and uh, we also offer more than 200 online courses through the program. The, we have Pulitzer Prize winners who come to speak. We have, um, we're having Alex Beam from the Boston Globe is coming. We have Nick Page, who was a former one, I think he had the highest um, the highest position, uh, non-career position in um, the State Department. So 
And now I'm going to get to Kids Zone. One of the things I wanted to say that's really important there, Kids Zone is our after school enrichment program. We've had a 30% increase in one year in the use of that program. It's now in all seven elementary schools. When we began, it was a tough sell because, as you can imagine, principals don't have the space to give up at the end of the school day. So we really had to persuade people that, that there was a need there and that there was an interest there. Now we don't have to ask anymore. They're, what are you bringing to us this time? They're, and also we started out, there were just six of the elementary schools were offering the program. And now we're, <coughs> as of uh, last year, we're in all elementary schools. Um, GoLingo is an, the after school language program that has really exploded. I would say that now that they, we have two, two components. One is an hour per week language through the use of play and music in all the elementary schools. It was when I, what I wanted to point out here is that it was the very first time that it was offered at Hardy. And they had the second largest enrollment in the district, the very first time it was offered there. The, um, and we also, based upon the fact that parents came to the district and said that they were interested in a bilingual or multilingual immersion kindergarten, which the district didn't feel it was capable of supporting at the time, we worked with these parents and created an, a full, an extended day Spanish immersion program at the bracket Students come from all over the district to this program. And again, we had 36 full year students. This year, that program is expanding so that it is, it's gone from three to five days a week. And it's gone from kindergarten through first grade to kindergarten through second grade because so many of those kids, parents want them to continue with the, the um, education. Summer fun. Summer fun has been one of our greatest pleasures. We're now up to five weeks of, of half and full day programming. And uh, one of the great things is that uh, Ape Arlington Public School teachers create and implement all of these classes. They come up with their own ideas. These reflect their passions, their interests. They get so excited, they'll come at the end of the, at, at the, end of the session and they'll say, okay, next year, this is what I'm going to do. This is what the kids want. This is what the kids need. We are up to 2,000 enrollments, and it was a 15% increase over last year. Our first year, we were at about 500 students. Uh, Melanie Konstantakis-Schwartz has been the director since the inception of the program. She does a phenomenal job for us, and we, I don't think we could do it without her. Um, let's see. The other thing I wanted to say about Summer Fun, some of the other components, the Insider's Guide <coughs> to Audison, which is a really uh, fun three-day orientation for rising sixth graders. Peg Regan, who is at Audison, does a phenomenal job with her teachers in putting this program together. I hear parents just say now, well, you absolutely send your kid. That's all you do. Uh, you have to send them. We had a 23% increase, and we did about half of the entering class. I didn't, I forgot, failed to mention that in all of our youth programming, no child is ever denied for their inability to pay. We offer scholarships. The first, the initial screening is free and reduced lunch. If you're on free or reduced lunch, you get a, um, a sharp discount in the program. And then, of course, there are extenuating circumstances, and we always respond to those. The, um, this year, we added the Go Lingo Spanish Immersion Program at Pierce. Pierce was, could not have been greater to us. It worked very well. We had 54 students who went through that program. And as I said here, parents signed up for the first week of the program. It was so great that they signed up for the second week. And we hope to expand that next year. Melanie Constantakis also runs Club Invention, which was held here at the high school for grades one through six. And it was, it's really a science, math, and technology program. I just wanted, I think, you know, pictures convey the story. Uh, the, the young girl on the left, she was in our sculpture class. The, uh, 
The students on the right are in our way cool cooking class, which is always the first class that, be, that fills every single year. Um, I love the kid in the second from the left. He is ready. He, that is Nate's Ninjas, that's the class. And then we also offer string, you know, string ensembles. So I'm just trying to show you the, the, the breadth of the, the offerings. Uh, yoga, breathe in, breathe out. The upper right-hand corner, uh, those are peeps that were created through the um, Hello Cupcake class. And on the bottom right, that was uh, a student's invention in um, duct tape fun. <laughs> and here we have, uh, on the left, fun in one act. And on the right, uh, hero and villain cartoonings. Okay, so what, one of the things I just wanted to say is one of our biggest challenges is space space in the schools to run these programs. We could run them on vacations, we could run them all summer, we could run them all the time. But we're always, as you all know, we're challenged by space. <coughs> and um, I think the superintendent has done a great job of helping get some of the conflicts in the, um, everybody wants the Audison in the summer, and so some programs have been moved to other places and that's been a, a great help to parents who are trying to park their cars and get their kids in the programs and get off to school in the morning. Um, so looking ahead, what we're thinking about in terms of programming, we're going to continue to build the adult programming. We're looking at certification programs where we have the facilities for those here. And we're looking at, you know, we're working, we're having discussions with the high school administration about the feasibility of providing GED. Uh, through community education. We're going to expand and develop our youth programming. Again, the model that we use is that surplus, surplus revenue from our other programs is used to seed the development of new programs. There's no money to pay these teachers. There's no money to pay people to develop them in their inaugural year. So that's how we're able to respond to these community needs. One of the other things that we're, we're looking at middle school after middle school, after school enrichment, and we're, we're in discussions with Todd on that. Um, we want to provide a summer tech week, perhaps, here in, in the summer, uh, using, uh, based on a model that's used in another school where Arlington High School students and recent grads actually create and teach the classes, and it's been a phenomenal success at other schools. We're looking at CAD, which we offered this summer, um, electronic music production, graphic design, programming. We're also looking at summer credit recovery classes for high school students. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you can read here some of the things that we're looking for for, um, for, high, school, for high school students. One of the other th points I wanted to make is that we really use high school students as much as we can as interns and as uh, volunteers and as paid staff. So we hire each term for our evening programs students, high school students who greet the, our students as they come in the building. They represent the student body and they represent the district. They, they guide people to their classrooms. They do whatever is needed. And they're always at the front door at the beginning of, um, of every evening. And we also employ students who, uh, as tech aides, because any of us who are not digital natives don't even know how to really use a Dell CD projector and plug in our laptop. So they are great, and they also are aides in our technology classes to the teachers. Somebody needs a little bit of one-on-one, -on -one, they are there for them. And we also use student aides in our culinary arts program. So we have professional chefs who come in, and we have culinary arts students who work as they work beside them. And again, they're introduced to the students, to our adult students as um, representatives of Arlington High School. And in our evaluations, we see from um, the public, I was so impressed by the students, you know, the high school students that I met. So it's, it's great, and we want to expand that as we can. We're also looking at um, vacation camps you know, if that would be built using the um, summer fun model. So we're hoping 
that we'll be able to offer those in perhaps February and April of this year. Uh, let's see. And so we're always open to other ideas. Um, it was Superintendent Bodie who said to me, let's use some of this surplus revenue to create youth programs that meet community needs, things that we cannot do during the school, school day. And that's the model that we've used. The, um, what I would say here is that what, if there's any message I want to leave you with is it's that we have the flexibility because of the way that, we're f that our, we derive our funding to quickly develop new programs and respond to community needs. And Superintendent Bodie has given us a lot of freedom and a lot of direction to do that. Thank you. Anyone on the board? Um, well, I just wanted to congratulate you and say that our family has enjoyed many of the programs. Um, my daughter took CAD this summer and it transformed her. It was fantastic. Um, but actually, I also wanted to ask a question about financing. I know that I've seen on the check things that we sign, some of the, the funds coming out. I mean, I was just wondering, I, I, it gets it gets sort of funneled through the school committee th through the no. school department. It does. No, it's okay. a, it's a revolving fund, and I think that's by state law. Okay. All of the community ed programs. I know that on the check things that we sign, sometimes there's things. Oh, me, oh, to the per the warrant. The warrant articles. Sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, that wouldn't be okay. Yeah. Yes, so it, it, there, <coughs> it's, it's. I mean, it's just sort of kept in a separate accounting. Yes, fund, it's a but, revolving okay. account, but it is. Community education is part of the Arlington Public Schools, and so it goes through our whole okay, financial right. process. So everything goes up curious. to Diane. Everything mm -hmm. goes up to okay. Diane. To I was just curious of how the process was. Correct. Okay, mm -hmm. good. But um, yeah, congratulations. I think it's a fantastic Thanks. program. So. This was our first summer experiencing it, and our daughter loved Over the Rainbow and Books Alive. I mean, she absolutely had a fantastic week. And that you could have a student do a morning and then have lunch at the Audison and then do an afternoon is just, uh, it was a great program. Thank we you. do offer aftercare too until 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I'm going to say exactly the same thing. We had two, mm -hmm. both of my daughters had classes this summer and they just love them the day trippers adventure day trippers day was trippers outstanding. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, the uh, she, one was in the one act plays and also duct tape fun <laughs> so they were all great well I oh, and toys that go was also we can't great. say enough about the teachers you know we're in awe that those of us who are administrators are in awe these teachers are keep their energy up keep their enthusiasm up this summer it did not get it's blazingly hot as it has there um, and uh, but those teachers are you know they're they're amazing they really are thank you very much you please much. pass on our gratitude to them yes Ms. Oh, I just have one more um, I as this isn't a criticism but I've heard from some seniors that they wish there was more programming during the day there was but there's some what? There, there was more programming during the day I'm sorry for seniors, that seniors have w have said that they wish there was more programming during the day. During the day. Mm -hmm. But I, right. I know that space is an issue for that. It is. It is an issue during the day. But we have a lot of online classes, and mm -hmm. we're working with Matthew right now mm -hmm. to make sure that students know that they're available to take those classes mm -hmm. as electives. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks. Okay. Ms. Hoos, do you mean... Um, seniors, like senior me. citizens. Senior citizens. Yes. yes oh, that's sorry. What. Sorry. Oh. I'm asking. You know, I've heard from senior citizens that I've met oh, in the community. Oh, senior citizens. Um, senior sorry, yeah. We are offering more and more daytime classes whenever we can get the space. Yes, I it know costs, space is the issue. It yes. is, and it costs. You know, it costs a lot of money oh, to, rent to rent spaces space. right. so during the day. But we are, and we're working actually with the Arlington Council on Aging. Mm -hmm. We are um, co-sponsoring. I think there's four classes mm -hmm. with them this this okay. term. So we're hoping to develop that. Great, awesome. Sorry, I thought you meant the high school seniors. Okay. Thank you again. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Don. Dr. Burton, on each one of your items, would you stop and let people ask questions as you do your report? Certainly. Thank you. All right. Well, going to the opening day, um, I just want to give you some general overviews of what has been going on this, this last couple of days, actually the last couple of weeks. And then we have a, a number of just short reports around different, different things that um, in combination all of us will be giving you this evening. 
I have to say it was a very smooth opening um, all around. Um, as I mentioned to you in my email, the only slight hitch was the malfunctioning smoke alarm um, at, at Pierce on the first day at 8.15, I might add. Mm. But they all handled it extremely well. Um, I have been around to all of the schools and um, walked through all of the corridors, and I, I'm, I always remain so impressed with um, the teachers and how they begin the school year, the, the number of, of practices and pros, that, they, that they are conscious of uh, educating the children about even where you go outside for, for a um, fire drill. So all of that went very smoothly. The thing that, that I don't know if everybody appreciates is the amount of work that it takes to actually have a smooth opening. Uh, there are just so many parts to that. And I, and I do want to acknowledge uh, groups of people and their part mm -hmm. that have made it just such a, a great opening. The schools look terrific. And um, this is really due to the wonderful work that our custodians have done. We've, and uh, Diane has given you the names of uh, Jeremy Brandt and Rodrigo Macedo, who are our new daytime and nighttime supervisors. They have just done a fabulous job, along with Mark Miano, in making sure that the buildings look terrific, things that needed to get fixed were fixed. Uh, the, f the thing I love, uh, all the floors are, quite, are shiny everywhere. Which is, which is, I think, very welcoming when people come back. There's just that sense of newness and cleanliness that's, that's important. But you know, in addition to that, there's a lot of hiring that went on this summer. And I'll let Rob talk about that a little bit more later on. But there are hiring committees, and principals were working. And certainly, the HR department was abuzz all summer. Um, the, the, the secretaries on this floor, as well as building secretaries, were busy with the ordering, the unboxing, the checking of class lists, the, the, the lists of things that they had to accomplish were tremendous. We've had central registration, and that office has been nonstop all summer. Um, the, I, and I'm glad David Good is here this evening because his team just did an extraordinary job this summer in um, doing a number of things, which will get a more complete report. But we had, through the generosity of the Arlington Town Capital Committee, as well as the Arlington Educational Foundation, were able to um, purchase 275 laptops for teachers. And there were 500 devices for students who were distributed to the nine schools. And all of those have to be prepared, as well as distributed. And, and, and Dave's team was just amazing, working very, very long hours all summer and did an extraordinary job. Not to mention the fact that we also had um, new wireless, uh, I'm telling, I'm probably telling a lot of Laura's report, but we had a lot of wireless points put in because of the unevenness of the signals. So it was very busy there as well. Um, we also had Marie Janiak who has um, organized the the preparation for our new teachers, which included a lot of curriculum work in which they had mentors in their dif different uh, uh, areas of um, such as reading, mathematics, um, this summer to prepare them to begin an opening day, as well as a new teacher orientation. And, and I do want to uh, mention at this point, um, one of the things that um, we learned quite recently is that the Rennie Institute, which is a policy uh, um, and think tank in Cambridge, which many of you are familiar with, have um, identified Arlington's mentoring program as one of the four in the state that they would like to see as a model for how other districts organize their mentoring program. And I give a lot of credit to not only Marie, but to all, everybody that's been involved in that, all of the mentoring that goes on. And Linda Hansen has certainly been part of all of that as well. So it's really, um, we, we knew we were good, but we didn't realize how good we really are. And I think a lot of that information will be coming out this fall in their report, and we'll certainly share that with you when that comes. As I said, we, we welcomed a new director just quite recently, as well as two new principals at Dallin, Thad Digman, and at, at Thompson, Karen Donato. And they jumped in right away with uh, 
as it's all the boxes, the scheduling, the registration, and they had a pretty busy summer as well. Unfortunately, we also are losing one of our really valued colleagues, Carrie Dunn, who is who the Boston Public Schools recruited and pursued to become their director of history. And um, it was it's just it was a, it was a great opportunity. And uh, Carrie will be leaving us at the end of the month. I'm not sure that there will be an opportunity for her to be here at the here with you at, at the uh, at a meeting. But if you have an opportunity to see her, I know that she she would like to say goodbye. So we have, as I said, we have a number um, of reports. And uh, let me start with um, the enrollment, which has been such a dynamic process this summer. We've had both directions. We've had students that are leaving the district uh, from last year. In fact, in some class, in some grades at some schools, we've had as many as 23 leave. But then we have more that come. I was talking to a principal who's been here for at least 10 years. And I think the thing that um, she would say is that in the last couple of years, the, just the amount of churn with, with enrollment has been just dramatic. Um, I, I don't, I can't give you exact numbers this evening because we are in the process right now um, of doing a proofing, which means that we're going through everything that's in our data management system to the actual class list, and that process began today. Uh, so certainly by next week we'll have um, a better idea. But what I can say is that this year we're having a milestone in that we have our first kindergarten class over 500. Uh, that number has fluctuated over 500, but has never gone below 500, and I, and I think that it's going to end up somewhere around 510 <clears> to 515, um, which has made class sizes a little bit larger at the elementary. Uh, for, for kindergarten, we've had to add two kindergartens since we created the budget, as well as a, a fifth grade as well at, at Hardy. That happened earlier in the summer. The, the buffer zone tool that we had was very helpful this summer in trying to create a little bit more balance between class sizes. And, and, uh, but having, having said that, there are still class sizes that are quite large. And there are class sizes at the same grade level that are smaller. And that kind of inequality is very hard to entirely um, even out even with this tool, because the buffer zones that we have represent only about 23% of the town. And, and while it's helpful, it doesn't completely solve um, that problem. But with class sizes that have been large, what we have added is, is um, teacher support, teaching aids. And um, at this point, we're not going to be adding any additional classes. One of the other big challenges this summer is it's not simple to add a class. It may seem like you just need to add a class, get, have a teacher. But it's not that simple because every elementary class, for example, is supported with physical education, art, music, and all of those specials have to be um, assigned. And we've had to add uh, pieces of all of those and redo schedules that were already created in June. And at this point, I, I, I think we've sort of, we we've, we've just were able to finally settle that at the end of last week, uh, the, the rescheduling and the hiring uh, of more people to cover that. We've had the same issue at all levels. We've had to add point 0.2 here, point, point 0.4 there, in order to be able to cover uh, classes, sections, and also, um, in order to be able to schedule the schools, so we've had a we've had a fair number of increases, and I and I think you'll hear in the hiring report that while there's a lot of full time, there's a lot more part time this year because of that 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 part of it. So we'll have a complete report, um, as I said, on this as we go forward. I will also tell you another place where there was a big a sizable increase this year from last year, and that is the Audison. Um, we had. Um, an increase of 100, about 100 students. And one of the other surprises that we saw is that last year's fifth grade was 414 at the end of the year. 
but our incoming sixth grade was 420, and that number isn't <coughs> hard and fast yet. Again, it's in a little bit of flux. But the thing that's surprising is that you, we've always had a change from fifth to sixth in terms of students going to, um, that, that's the big change when you go to private school. And so we're, we're, what you're seeing is that, that students did go to private school, but even with that, we are above what the exiting fifth grade was. And so as we look to the budget, as we look to the school, we are going to have to look at increased staffing and of course space is going to be an issue which we will talk more about as the year goes on. It is a challenge um, in that respect. So that, that's sort of like a, an overview of where we are with enrollment. It is, it's, it's keeping in the trend line that we saw the last two years. Actually, I think it's gonna, it, it will be higher than it was last year. Uh, and we'll have a more, by the time we meet next time, we'll have a more definitive number for you. So before I go on the reports, are there any questions on any of this? So please, quick question, Dr. Bodie, on the increase of uh, ELL students and what impact that might have to this current year. That, that has been um, significant also. In fact, even just this week, we've had some, uh, a number of increases. Um, we've had to increase the number of ELL teachers, and in fact, we may be in the position of having to increase them even more um, than we had. So that, that part isn't finished either. In some cases, we're trying to, um, well, it's, it's, it's moving students to where we might have the correct programming, and uh, we have seen a, a big increase. And I, I don't think we have the exact numbers, but, we, but it has been significant. And we're in the process of assessing students. Um, we have, uh, uh, and seeing how difficult it's been able to react as quickly as we would like. Um, we have uh, already planned for next summer and a different process than we have had in the past. Um, the number of the influx of ELL students was not as significant in previous years, so it was easy to respond to the additional student. Now the numbers are, are getting into su such a way that we need to, to screen prior to the school year starting. And, and this just dovetails, I think, with that question in terms of the central registration and moving to central registration. Have you seen? Uh, an uptick in terms of the, the uh, centering the information better than having all the different schools have their own information, or is there still some things to perfect with regard to central? There, there are. Okay. There are still still s systems we need to put in place to. It's it gets complicated with our data management system because you have to keep last year's enrollment in the system in order to do summer reports and Mr. Schlickman probably is aware of what some of those reports are. So while maintaining old data, you are, you're trying to also manage the, the influx, which is a lot during the summer. So we, we've learned a lot. We're going to be debriefing over the next week or so um, after the sort of the dust settles a bit uh, to see what, what systems we have in place. In fact, um, I, you've heard me, Paula Neville last year was involved with one of our analyses of the system of, around our after school programs and she is going to be working on developing improved systems for this as well over the next uh, few weeks. Thanks. I just have a question. Um, what happens when students move in in the upper elementary, new students to the district? Do we offer them the option to go to a school that has a smaller class size, or do we strictly go by their district you know, and by buffer zones mm -hmm. in those cases? So suppose there's a classroom sort of across town, it's a new student to the district that's much smaller. I, I was just wondering if there's an option to offer that to the, the family. We, um, there is, in fact, we've selectively done that this summer. Um, and a couple of people have taken us up on it, others have not. Sure. Uh, we have, we review, as far as open enrollment requests and then also wait lists, one, we have periodically gone over everybody's requests this summer and in fact the last time we did that was last Friday. We went, we reviewed all of the decisions of the summer and in some cases we were able to offer, even on Friday, uh, some, an option to get off the wait list and go and, and some people did and some people didn't. Could I mm -hmm. just clarify that anyone that's, we offer a position across town, 
the burden of transportation is on them, not us. Am mm -hmm. I correct? Yes. Okay. That mm -hmm. sure. just want to make that clear to the audience out sure. there that mm -hmm. the school mm -hmm. will not assume the transportation from East Arlington to Arlington Heights. Mm -hmm. Right. It, though your more your question though um, is a, is a very good question in thinking about a system to do that because the numbers are changing, but you don't really know where they're going to land mm -hmm. in July, and so. Um, we, if there's a system that we could put in place, we do have one for buffer zones, but we don't have one where um, people who are in a, in a particular district would necessarily say, well, can you tell me where the enrollment is in the neighboring district? I was actually just struck this year by how many new students at higher levels, high school, Audison, mm -hmm. you know, upper elementary. I, was, I don't know if this is particularly unusual, but I was struck by how many people. It's a lot. It's across the district, mm -hmm. the increases. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. I don't have a question so much as a request. When we do get numbers about the new students coming into the district, can we get both new students? I want to capture how many new people are, were enrolled and, and how many stayed. So I don't just want totals to compare last year's total to this year. I'd like to know. We had we have this many and then we got this many new and this many left. Actually, I, I have a report like that right now. It's 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 uh, it's taking it by school by grade, and you can see from October one last year. Uh, and it's, it's very interesting. And I will share it with you once we confirm all of it. But you know, mm -hmm. one class is up eighteen, another one's down two, up mm -hmm. one. It, it's it's there's no yeah. pattern to it at all. I think it'll yeah. It helps. To understand more than just seeing the, the yes. totals, I think it does too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. All right. Um, Aline Wong. Rob. So I'm just going to talk very briefly about this. Um, you have in your packet the uh, updated uh, bullying uh, prevention, uh, the bullying policy, and uh, pr procedures for reporting. One of the big differences from in this uh, in this version is that now we're required because of the law change to have procedures for responding to complaints of bullying um, by staff, um, allegations of bullying by school staff. So that's in this um, in this updated policy. And uh, Cindy Bouvier has put this together, and I saw during. Uh, the new teacher orientation she did training for all the new teachers on the bullying policy so the training aspects of the, the requirements of the law are being incorporated in the district um so i don't know if laura or kathy have anything to add i will also say that at the faculty meetings on mm -hmm. thursday all of these trainings were um, were provided to all of our staff mm -hmm. so some of our new teachers not only heard it at the orientation day but they also um, had it reiterated on that at the faculty meetings but there is one change in the law you might want to mention the, <laughs> the, what he did I think oh, he did yeah. yes. the oh. allegations of bullying by oh, yeah, staff yeah, yeah. 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 just yeah. to clarify that's bullying by staff against students against students yeah. yes right. it's staff mm -hmm. against students so the, the, the bullying <laughs> law and policy covers allegations of bullying by students against other students and by staff against students right. Members of the committee? I had yes. questions. Um, a couple of things. So I went through the new policy, mm -hmm. um, and it talks on page two, it talks about that there's information available on the website, and it gives the address. But when I go to our website, I mean, the, the main Arlington Public Schools website, I find it's actually very, very difficult to navigate not knowing this specific address. You have to know to look for safe schools and click on that and then start, and, and it puts you off in this whole other mm. wall and it's like, wow, look at all this stuff. But you can't get there either by searching or by keywords like bullying, I mean, looking for things. So I think that's a problem. Um, and then, so that's, that's one thing. Then the other thing, on page 11, it talks about needing notification to parents and that parents are supposed to get, I'm having a hard time finding my page, just a second. Um, 
The annual parent notification letter sent home includes information about the dynamics of bullying and cyberbullying on the reporting process and location of suspected bullying incident report forms. So I looked at the two things which I think are these letters that I got from various schools. Now I'm not trying to call out specific schools, um, but neither one contained the information that they're talking about. One of them had wrong links. If you actually typed in the link, you couldn't get to the, the thing that they were talking about. You got to the old one. Um, or one of the links didn't work at all. Um, they, they didn't have any language around them trying to explain what, was, what this information was being provided for. It was just like a cutout of policy. One of them was for the high school, and I don't have a high schooler kid so it really didn't make much sense at all um, so I think I'm concerned that you know the bullying policy and and all these procedures are great but we need to be sure that they're actually being filtered out to a to the bottom where they're working I'm, I'm worried that we've done all the stuff on the top because that was required by the government but we never actually looked at the lower layers to make sure that when it gets down to the parents that it's actually the information's there and findable and there and understandable and actually that we're following all the I'm, I'm not sure right now that we're in all schools following the letter of what this mm -hmm. policy says so I ask can you get from the principals what did you send out and see does it do you feel it it matches um, and and if not can we send something else out um, so, in fact, it would be helpful if you could tell me. I, I can't. I'm not. Again, I'm not trying to call out <laughs> any specific. I didn't have a chance to call and see if any, you know, to check with other schools. But the, mm -hmm. I did do two, and neither one. The links up. did not work. No, they're the wrong links. Wrong links. It's not been updated. Is there any other members? I have a couple. Um, we're required to record the amount, the numbers. Do, uh, do you offhand, right at this moment, have the, the current numbers of uh, reported incidents for the past three or five, five years? So I don't have that information. Okay. Cindy okay. Bouvier may, I would, she should have. When, when we talk, uh, when we say annual training, is the follow-up throughout the year, I know we do it initially for new teachers coming in, that's part of the teacher orientation, mm -hmm. and usually first day of a couple of days, teachers here, the, st the standard things, but are there fo follow-up uh, done by principals, the department heads, and things of this nature periodically on bullying? Because I can just remember as a teacher, first couple of days you hear these this uh, going on. I'm just, do we normally have follow-up during the year? I think the, I mean, the, the training happens, as we said, during new teacher orientation right. and the, for opening day meetings. I think the focus of professional development is so extensive in this district that it's I'm, hard to fit everything I, I, in for the rest of the year. Right. I guess I'm not asking for a full program, yeah. but I think often you have that initial statement made the first couple of days, and then there's an incident, then you gather the whole faculty to refresh them. You become reactive rather than proactive. That's all I'm saying. Just, I want to bring that to your attention. I realize we're, we're overwhelming with our staff, but too often when there's a bullying incident, we have a tendency to re revamp and remind everybody about it and the reporting and everything, and it's a reactive thing. I think this also speaks again uh, you know, to the decision a couple years ago to add full-time social workers in every elementary school. The social workers and the guidance counselors are the, the professional staff, along with the principal, who really um, work on this issue and, okay. and respond to complaints, and they are very well trained. The other uh, question I had, uh, if a student is on an IEP and is deemed the, the, the bully, aren't we required to uh, have a manifestation hearing uh, dealing with that? Um, no, but you are required if a student is um, either likely to be subject to bullying to address it in the IEP, which they noted we did that in the new right. cycle, but also if a student, because of their IEP, because of their disability has a tendency to perhaps engage in bullying behavior, you should also address it. So the manifestation yeah. hearing is not automatic if you're on an IEP? The manifestation is triggered by the amount of days in which you're suspended. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not by a particular. Looking at the form, there was no, uh, in the reporting, I don't know if we're required to report and identify the person being on an IEP. 
Okay. Um, for the bullying, yes. uh, let's just say I do not think it's required, but I'm okay. not. But when a student is uh, suspended, if they were suspended for bullying, then you have to notate at that time. And that they actually talked about that in terms of uh, I, you have to look at the suspension. I thought it was it was any kind of disciplinary action had to be looked at in light of the uh, the disability. Well, as Allison said. I said, mean, suspension is one <coughs> form of disciplinary. There could be other forms. So I, I, things have changed days. in 15 under, years. Under 10 days, you would treat it as you would treat any other disciplinary action. Mm -hmm. But if you were denying a student participation in social activities as a result of this, That's you're, not, you're not suspending them from school. You suspend, it would no, be suspended. That wouldn't be a manifestation. OK, thank you. Anything else? OK. Okay, um, Laura, would you give a uh, summary of the summer professional development and the uh, looking ahead for this year? Sure. Um, we had, as usual, quite extensive professional development this summer. We had 208 teachers that participated in oh, almost 100 days of professional development. Um, I still have uh, some green sheets that are coming in, so. The, you know, the number right now is around 52,000, but I expect it to be, give or take, that's, we, we spent a lot wow. of money in this district on professional development this summer, and it is definitely worth it. We have already had, um, I've already had meetings where people are saying, and I went to this this summer for professional development, and we absolutely have to have those people um, that, that worked on this or that share that throughout the year. So we'll definitely um, have that going. Um, the vast majority of our professional development is sponsored and uh, designed and, and given by our own staff. We very rarely use people from the outside, and I think that that says to a lot of the level of expertise that we have within the district. Um, while there's uh, topics across all subject areas, um, w when there's an area such as um, a social worker or special education um, person or a guidance counselor that we may not have something that is about um, that relates to their field. Um, we have courses offered at EDCO that we will, the district will pay for in order for them to attend. Um, we really focused a lot this summer again on the implementation of the Common Core, <coughs> what it looks like in the classroom, um, particularly in the area of nonfiction. Um, reading and writing and also in the math practice standards and we'll continue to see that. That also is reflected in our very full professional development cal calendar already for this year. Um, I worked with the curriculum directors and actually Linda and I worked together to also make sure that there's um, as much time as possible for not only professional development, for teachers to work in their professional learning communities, to have time to look at student data and common assessments um, and uh, you know really impact student achievement. Um, we also will have a full day professional development day in November. Um, one portion of that day will be a required training based on <coughs> what that subject area needs to work on. Uh, or subject area or grade level needs to work on, but there'll also be options for faculty to choose. And with this year, we've um, again formed a professional development committee um, that will uh, help us to plan that day and also to plan what um, offerings we'll offer for next summer and during the next school year. Yes. Um, so I was just wondering, is there an opportunity for staff to comment on the professional development that they've done? I know that was something that was asked for last year. Yep, we actually, uh, all the people that offer professional development offer a survey for the faculty to respond back to. Um, and you know, we'll be continuing to look at that data. But the data that I've seen thus far is very positive. OK, good. And then uh, one more question. Um, who is a professional development team? Are they um, a mix of teachers and They will be people or? who volunteer to participate as part of that committee. OK. So um, as well as, pardon me? How many people about? What did we say? Ten. Ten. Okay. That's what I thought. But I wanted to make. Okay. <laughs> Linda and I've been working. Are they on representative this of the? Well, we're levels? just in the process of forming it, okay. but it's our it's our hope that we would have people representative from each school. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. I just wondered if there isn't some way to capture the the breadth of the professional development that was offered and the number of people who participated and help use it as a recruiting tool when we're hiring new teachers. Um, I mean, I don't know how hard it is for us to hire the teachers that we really want, but it seems like having good PD offered on a regular basis would be something that would be a plus. I mean, that is definitely something we mention in um, recruiting um, 
visits in, in job fairs in, um, in some of our um, literature. So it's definitely been, it's out there that we're, we're proud of that and we do, um, we do speak about it. And I know the principals and curriculum directors when they go to um, represent the district at job fairs or when they're doing interviewing, which they're, they're doing the interviewing, they'll mention that too. We've made adjustments, modifications in the budget in our professional development budget over the past several years. In different, and I can't remember all, you would know the details, Dan, but has that, has that impacted the amount of PD we can deliver? Or the summer PD, it wouldn't have impacted it because some of it's teachers. No, I mean, some for. of the PD that we offer in the summertime is, is uh, funded by Title I, yeah. for example. Okay. Um, some of it is offered, um, funded by Title IIA. Right. Um, in uh, previous years, we've also had summer PD. Last year, we ran a T21 class, and yeah. that was funded by the Arlington Educational Foundation. So, um, and we ran a literacy uh, workshop at the LM middle school level also last summer that was funded by the Arlington Educational Foundation. So um, we're pretty creative in going to, t when I talk about that number, that's not all from the operational budget. That's the number total, but it comes from a variety of sources. Okay, thank you. And that's been a number we've been pretty much using for summer PD for the last few years is about 50,000. Mm -hmm. Multiple sources, but that's mm -hmm. about. This. I mean, a tendency of school districts has been when budgets get tight, PD gets cut. But, but we haven't yeah, done that. We don't. I, I, it's so important. Yeah. It, okay. it, that that is how you revitalize your school district, and and, and I, I think it's money mm -hmm. that it's not one that's not an area that I would want to cut unless really forced Good. to cut. I just wanted to make sure that was clear. In fact, I would like to see more money available for it. But certainly, the summer, as Laura said, that that is a key time to do a lot of this work, and it's we just haven't cut back on it. Got it. Thank you. Well, with some more reports. Um, the new teacher manual you ha have seen, um, which sort of is something that we give to all of our new teachers. And again, I think that this is something that I've come to understand is not uniformly done in other districts. So uh, the, the whole model of what we do for mentoring is something that, uh, as I said, the Rennie Institute is very interested in. One of the things that we do and that is unusual, we've talked about this before, is that we actually have curriculum mentors at the elementary grade, and these, mm -hmm. these mentors work as, actually as models, as master teachers, in the, in, and the new, the new teachers at that grade level, or new to the district or new to the grade level, go to that teacher's classroom during the year to see model lessons. So, it's, it's a very comprehensive, and it may be, it, once we get this full report, it would be nice to have Marie come and talk about this, but we also have people here who are very much part of that whole program as well. But moving on, um, you, uh, Laura, you want to give uh, the technology report, and then we'll go to building construction. Okay. As Kathy has spoken before, we um, had such a busy summer in technology, and, and I would be remiss if I did not mention by name Dan Sheehan, Francis DeBarra, Sean Faith, Dennis Lowry, Hess Fosky, and Matt Paisano, who just, I mean, just from opening the boxes to imaging the machines to sending emails over and over and over again. We originally planned for 275 machines because of the new staff that we got in the district. We're more at, going to be at the 290 range. Um, they did two upgrades to power school. Uh, there was not ever a day where I felt like I wasn't saying again and again, this is a priority, this is a priority. Everything was a priority, and they, they did it with a smile on their face, even though they might have been thinking something else in their head. Um, they did a major upgrade to the Wi-Fi networks at OMS and the high school, and it was always at the time when it was the hottest days of the summer. We didn't have too many hot days, but there were always the days when uh, we had to work on that. Um, they did uh, an initial cart per grade at the elementary school, so we're now up to um, a cart per grade at each of the elementary schools. Um, they did additional carts in a new lab for Audison. Um, they did additional student machines for the high school. They were just in every building. And, um, you know, despite the number of emails that they said reminding staff, come in the summer, pick up your machine now while there's not a long line, there was a line of like 40 people as we got down to opening day um, that were looking for their machines. In addition, um, Jeff Snyder and Susan Bisson and a couple other people, John um, 
uh, one of the teachers at the high school, I'm sorry, I'm mis forgetting his last name, um, and uh, Nicole. No, Ma Ma Masuk. Masuk. Yeah, Masuk. Yeah. Masuk, Masuk. Masuk, Masuk, thank you. Um, and um, Nicole Melnick all ran professional development, so it wasn't like we just gave teachers a machine. We offered them all kinds of professional development with that machine, and we'll continue to offer that throughout the summer. They also did, um, besides the upgrades to Power School, we did upgrades to Baseline Edge this summer and several other of our systems. So they just worked tirelessly through the whole summer, and I think that they're probably all in need of a very long vacation right now. Diane? Um, quite a bit of work was done over the summer. Um, in addition to the, the really great job that was done with the cleaning this summer and the, uh, the systematic way that it was done, which was nice having. This is, the, this is the second summer for our two new custodial supervisors, and you can really see that a year under their belt made a world of difference. They went into it with a game plan, and they executed it beautifully. There was none of the usual scrambling around frantic in the last week. It was all very smooth which was really commendably orchestrated on their part. Um, but we did some work at the Hardy um, with the exterior envelope. Um, there's water penetration that we thought was a window problem. It's actually a brick and mortar problem. And the long-term solution is that there's a sealant that needs to be applied to all of the Hardy about every 10 years. But in the meantime, we did some of the work and we're going back to capital to get more money to finish the entire building. It turned, to be, it turned out to be more extensive than we originally tested for. Um, but we, are, we now know what the problem is and we can address it and then maintain the building more watertight than we have been able to. We replaced the cafeteria floor at the Bishop. Um, we abated and replaced floors at both the Stratton and the high school. We were able to do some interior painting at the Brack, at the Pierce and the Audison. Uh, we were able to, part, to paint not all, but some of the high school locker rooms, um, the uglier ones, and so now the better looking one looks ugly in comparison, but at least we've moved the bar up a little bit. Um, we were awarded a Green Communities Grant that has allowed us to do a tremendous amount of energy efficiency improvements to the Audison, replacing a boiler, in, um, replacing the motors inside the unit vents in the classroom because many of them were turned off or disabled because the old, the old ones were so noisy and the new ones are much quieter and of course more energy efficient, but that's going to improve the ventilation, which has been a real complaint at the Audison that the air just doesn't move, it gets really funky and stale. And the, these new unit vents are going to go a long way, and the fact that they don't make as much noise will make them desirable to be in the run mode. Um, and we have a new energy management system. Um, we're moving towards eventually having all of the buildings in the district on energy management systems that can be controlled by our facilities manager from his laptop, rather than having to run from building to building. Um, we're, we are also at the Pierce. We've gone a step beyond that. We're part of a pilot program um, to have an overlay system which will actually be able to give us data about the systems in real time. So if a boiler's going wonky and suddenly burning up too much fuel way out of line, it'll send an email to Mark when it's fully functional. We'll send an email to Mark and say, get down there and check this now. You're losing you know, hundreds <coughs> of dollars a minute or something like that. So um, eventually that's where we want to go when we get all of our buildings up to that level that we can really do um, some neat stuff. We've also finally got school specialty almost ready. Um, uh, Bishop and Pierce are going to be piloting the new work order request system this fall, and we'll roll it out to the other schools. We just want to shake some of the bugs out with a few schools before we push it out to everybody. School Dude has many plug and play options. The work order system is the first step. The long-term preventative maintenance is the second step, so we make sure we're changing the, the filters and all of that so that all of our boilers are working optimally for the length of the time we save energy, we, keep, we maintain environment. But the next step beyond that is to be able to use a, a universal scheduling system that will eventually integrate with the energy management systems. The capacity exec exists technologically to be able to have someone log into our website, request the rental of a room, have us do the approvals internally, and have it synced with the energy management system literally to the point where you turn the heat on and turn the lights off during the rental period. Now we're years from that, but that's where we want to go eventually. Um, it's really neat and could potentially have tremendous savings, mm -hmm. not only in energy usage, but also just the hurly-burly of scheduling. You know, we really bring the management of the facilities together in a way that's going to be better for everybody. Um, Pierce has air conditioning. This was much anticipated, long awaited, 
and more tricky than just plugging it in and turning it on. It, it liked to uh, rain for a while, so we had a lot of repairs to do to get it fully functional. Apparently, when you build a building air conditioning ready and don't plug the chiller right in, it develops the building equivalent of arterial sclerosis. So when you do turn it on, it starts having embolisms all over the place. <laughs> water runs and that is a brilliant analogy. <laughs> it That's doesn't, like what brilliant. you don't use, you lose. So who knew buildings had the same problems as our cardiovascular system? But they do. Wow. Um, so we've got that all worked out at the Pierce, um, and the Dallin is in the budget for. We have a Dallin chiller in the budget for fiscal 19, I believe. So that will be the second school that we make air condition ready. Because the demands for summer PD and, and summer school and everything else, we need more air conditioned space mm -hmm. for summer activities. Um, and certainly, I'm sure community, I would love to have more air conditioned space for some of the programs they'd love to run. Um, and that is, oh, Bishop. We did some mold testing at some requests and um, the atmospheric mold outside the building was far, far greater than that inside the building, um, like a factor of four in the moldiest place on the inside. So there's no question of health. Um, and that report was shared with, with the bishop principal. So that's all good. And we were able to repair some wallboard that had been damaged by some flooding. We've put in a capital budget request for next year. We're not 100% sure that regrading the parking lot will help with that perennial heavy rain flooding of that back door at the Bishop. Um, the, the, water, the water specialist engineers from the DPW are still seeing if that would be a solution, but in the event that they decide that that is a solution, we've put in a request for next year to the Capital Budget Committee. But I think the big building news of the summer, beyond all of this great stuff, was the Stratton Building Committee. Yes. We as you recall, um, we began the project of looking at what would create parity with Stratton compared to with all of the other elementary schools. And we put together a building committee that began last year. We ended up hiring an architect to work with us. And, and uh, we worked throughout the whole summer and have now a final report, which you will have um, given to you sometime later this month. We're scheduling a presentation on, at the next school committee meeting with the architects to come here and just talk about w what the work was and their suggestions and the price tag. And then that, the architects along with the building committee will also meet with um, the capital committee and the permanent town building committee on October 2nd. So we're moving uh, along in that, in that effort. I'll just save the details of that till later. But it was a terrific committee and worked very well. I, I wasn't quite sure we'd hit the end of August deadline, but we did. And uh, the two architects we worked with um, from DRA were terrific. I would ask the committee, when you get the copy of the report, to look at it carefully so we're prepared to uh, mm -hmm. maximize our time with the architect when they come. Mm -hmm. And the date they're coming? Uh, the 18th. The 18th, our next meeting. The schedule on the agenda. Oh, so you should, you'll have the report before that. Okay. Uh, another uh, building um, event that happened just came out about a couple weeks ago. As you recall, when we did the Thompson building, one of the things we were looking to do is to increase what they call chip points, which are energy efficient points, so that we can increase the um, increase the sh share that the state paid toward Thompson. And we just got notice from our architect that we achieved 53 points and became a verified, had a verified leader status, which is actually quite unusual in the state. I think we're one of two um, in the last year or so. So we're, we're, we're going to, we're planning a ceremony that we haven't set the date yet, but uh, probably will be in October and, and we'll be inviting the, the uh, general, the general director of MSBA, Jack, uh, Jack McCarthy, and I talked to Adam Chaplain, and we're just working on what the date will be at this time. But anyway, it was it was wonderful, which meant that we got as much <coughs> reimbursement through green um, energy points as we could possibly get. We just were like one point off. So that was good. Mm -hmm. All right, um, that is the opening day report. A little bit longer than we thought, but combine the two times, we're right about there. Good. Moving on now. Just oh, quick sorry, question. go right ahead. Because we're on buildings, we were told maybe May, maybe June, we'd hear from MSBA. Oh, yeah. 
it's I, any word about timing? Yes, I do have word. I, I talked with Jack McCarthy mm -hmm. beginning of August, and it will be decided at their November meeting. Okay. Great. I, I should look on the website. I'm not sure which day that will be, but he, but I am going to ha uh, call him and see what else he might need in the way of documentation. If anything, we've submitted everything, but if he'd like to come and do a site visit, I'm going to invite him to do that. Okay. Did Thank he tell you. you which way he's leaning? And <laughs> uh, he did not, but he did tell me that uh, one of the things, they had more submittals this last year than they, they ever have, yeah. and more from districts with, which would get a higher reimbursement, which then affects the total pot that's available for schools. So he, did, he wasn't trying to discourage me, but at the same time show, have a realistic picture. I've mentioned this to you before, but I think we are unique in our population explosion. And I know you've told them once, I'd ask you to tell them every half hour, uh, what minute to minute updates as we, we grow. We're growing and growing and growing. And I've said it, if Bill Gates gave us a billion dollars, great, where would we put it? So we're just, we need, that I think makes us unique in the pot. Like well, that. we will send a letter um, as soon as we get confirmed numbers right. and uh, let them know where we are and what the what the effect of that is in the high school years out, because if we were to be accepted this year, probably it'd be at least six years before we completed the project at least. Mm -hmm. And so the the children that we see in the elementary right now would be entering. Um, some of our large mm -hmm. classes would be entering the high school, <coughs> would have entered the high school. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I second the idea of sending the increased enrollment update. I oh, think that's yeah. really good. Um, but I also wondered if there's any point if we should be thinking about, um, we don't, one of the things we don't have yet is a master facilities plan that is on their list list of things that they ask for through the application process and i'm just wondering if if we have to do another go round if that would improve our chances and whether we should be thinking about that um, actually diane knows a little bit more about that it comes actually the master plan piece comes actually down the, down the road with this. yeah it's it's further down the road it's, it's a master educational plan so it's not it's not just looking at the buildings it's looking at you know what you're planning for your <coughs> your change of mm -hmm. you know like if we were to do a shift like pushing kids back to the elementary which we can't because we're right. too small or pushing more kids this way right. those are the kind of things they're looking at and to okay. do it prematurely we're gonna end up doing it anyway if we continue to grow like this because that changes the game every time we add 300 kids I'll go through it again I thought that there was something else that was like a facility plan. Um, and that it was something that they asked if you already have one and it seemed to suggest that it was a good thing to have one so maybe i'm not sure i'm talking about the same thing as you are okay that could yeah. be well and one of one of our district goals for this year is to develop a plan relative mm -hmm. to space needs by june of 2015. could yes. that be something that is is in what you're asking I'm not totally sure what the thing I'm asking for mm -hmm. is, uh -huh. so I don't know. I mean, it, it certainly it sounds part like of it. it. Yeah, it would be part okay. of it. Yeah. But I'm just trying to think: is there anything we can be doing to improve our chances? I mean, besides sending off enrollment notices, either now or the next go round. Yeah. Every time I see him at a meeting, I follow That's him around. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. It's a tough, it's a process that you don't have a lot of control over, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. It's a slow yeah. process. That's what we learned with the Thompson. When I heard about the tornado in Worcester, I just prayed it didn't hit a school. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody got zapped back. Was, Springfield, yeah. was it Springfield a couple mm -hmm. of years ago? Yeah. 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 Uh, we all set? Okay, yeah. at this time, moving on to Ed EDCO Articles of Agreement. And uh, so I will entertain a motion to accept the EDCO Collaborative Articles of Agreement as presented. So moved. Second. Any discussion on that? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion, uh, I'd entertain a motion to authorize Ed, I'm sorry, no. Yeah, or, Ms. Jeff moved, I second. Mm -hmm. All set? No. Mm -hmm. 
I will entertain a motion to authorize EDCO Collaborative to establish a capital reserve fund to support costs associated with the acquisition, maintenance, and improvement of fixed assets, including real property pursuant to a capital plan. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Oh, sorry. I just wondered, so the plan says that two th if two thirds of the members vote so they can set up this capital thing and then mm -hmm. districts can be assessed if needed to bring in fees. I'm just wondering, is this, are we setting ourselves up like with mm -hmm. Minuteman or something? No, no, uh, that, that has to be in the, in the plan, but uh, this, the situation is more that the new regulations require that no collaborative can roll over more than 25 percent of their um, cash assets into the next fiscal year. And there are different ways that, you know, once, that, once we have the auditors come and determine what the surplus funds are, then the collaborative has options that they can do. But one of the options that exists, but would not exist for EDCO unless you vote for this, is to have a capital fund, which is more necessary now than it has been in the past because as we actually just finished, EDCO just moved to their new building um, this last week, which is out of Middlesex Turnpike. And uh, we have a 10 year with an option to go 15 year lease on this building. but. The, the the collaborative as part of the rental agreement will have this this capital needs that will exist as we go forward and there's been capital needs that we've had to just to set up the building over the la over the summer months so one of the stipulations in the law allows you that if you have um, excess funds you can either return them to the district um, or you could you could put them into a capital account. So it's it's the idea of building up this capital account to deal with things that we know are going to happen. I, I I haven't right now. I chair the 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 finance committee for Edco, and I don't anticipate any any need <coughs> to come back to member districts, at least in the near future. This assets there. It's more to make sure that we can. We've always taken the capital assets or the costs out of the operating budget and been able to carry that over from year to year, but now we're limited by the law in terms of how much it carry over. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Anything further? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I will entertain a motion to appoint Superintendent of Schools Kathleen Bodie as the voting member of EDCO Board of Directors from the Arlington School District. So Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I have two questions uh, regarding EDCO. I noticed in one of the documents that Acton and Boxborough were not listed. Have they uh, left the, or are they coming in as Acton and Boxborough was one? Coming in as a consolidated okay. district, and yeah. Just one minor thing. Why did it take 18 months to bring it to a vote? The documents were dated uh, 18 months ago. It's taken a while to, it's a, quite a process. Okay to get the articles agreed upon and then the, right now all the districts all the member districts are voting on the articles and voting on the capital it, it took a while it, it, it went with review with the our attorney auditors okay. so it was a process i was just curious yes it, uh, i would suggest a couple of years ago we had the edco director come in to make a presentation to us and at some point in the year i don't, I don't know i mean the chair does the schedule we, we, yeah. You talked sure to Bonnie like and that, I yes. already talked we are, about yeah, that. Okay. To, to come in that. and tell us about the new building and the programs and everything. Yeah, so what I, what I would what I would suggest that okay, good. Well, yes. I'm glad you're doing it. You're ahead oh. of everybody. But I would suggest in the presentation that we get um, some financial information on you know how does Arlington benefit from Edco, so we get some so the public has some concrete right. data on, on, on how we benefit. Okay, mm -hmm. I will yeah, definitely would, have. And so it's more of a and then a little concrete data, followed by a presentation on what it does and why it's important to Arlington because I don't think a lot of people understand it. Exactly. In the, in the community. Okay, I'll be happy. And Colleen has offered to come, Colleen Dolan, who is the executive yeah. director. And um, I, won't, I won't do a presentation on it right now, but I will say this, one of the reasons we've also moved, uh, we as a, as a collaborative, is that we're offering more special education programs, things that are not offered by lab or other, um, well, certainly maybe in private, but this again is supposed to be a collaborative effort. Right. 
So Colleen will come, we'll set up a time that works, but you are also gonna get invited to the open house, which is I believe October 27th from four to 6.30, but you'll get the invitation. It's um, to see the new building. Okay, okay uh, monthly budget report. Ms. Johnson. Thank you. Um, I'd like to, I'm sending around a, a handout. That, um, two things, there was a document that, that didn't make it into the upload, which I wasn't aware of until I was able to get into the upload. And there's also a revised sheet stapled to the document that was missing that is a revision of what was uploaded. Um, there's a very small change, less than $2,000, but I wanted to give you the most accurate numbers I could. Uh, the story of the story so far for this year is that we had to do additional hiring this summer to cope with um, more ELL students, more students in general, um, shifting schedules, specials, new classrooms. We, we went well past the five reserve teachers in the budget and had to add more to it. Now we're very fortunate to be in a position, thanks predominantly to our foreign visa students who pay tuition to come here, that we have a reserve of funding that will allow us to cover these additional hires we've had to make this year. Other than that, we are starting up the year <coughs> pretty much as we expect. Um, we've, as you see, the encumbrance number is quite high in the general fund. That's typical. We encumber what we estimate we'll spend in utilities and other things for the entire year. Special Ed is in the process of encumbering their estimations on tuition for the entire year. So you'll see that encumbrance number go down as the year progresses. Expenditures, however, are small, relatively speaking, because teachers' salary for July and August relates to the prior fiscal year. So it, as of this report, you didn't see any current school year teachers' salaries hitting. The only teachers' salaries that hit over the summer were people actually teaching summer school, which is different from the summer salaries that belong to FY14. The beginning of October, uh, I'll be doing a report talking about where we landed on FY14. Um, but this month we're doing the end of the year report for the state and uh, we'll be working on that throughout this month. Any questions? Anyone from the board? Um, I was looking at the budget tracking statement on page one of three. Mm -hmm. um, natural gas is estimating under budget and I'm wondering is that because it's coming out of another pot? Correct. Okay. I have to admit I hit the wrong key a minute ago and I deleted all my questions that would make you happy, but I, I, still, I have still a couple that I do remember. Uh, one, did I miss it or is there no entry for special education on this report? Mm. Oh. Did I miss it? No, they're out of district tuitions in the... Um, out of district tuitions here for sure. But the regular SPED line, I didn't see that. Special education, there's usually a line that has the word okay. SPED on it. Did I miss it? I may have just tuition to other schools. That's it. That's it. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't say SPED, but it is. And one other question is, do when teachers move, I remember we put a special line item in once for Thompson going to Hardy and back. Mm -hmm. I then went into the contract and saw, uh, do we ever move teachers without the teachers themselves doing the moving? Yes but they get an allowance for the packing when, when we act, the, the actual moving of the physical boxes is done by the custodial staff. Even the, if we ever, all right, thank you. I'll discuss later, thank you. And thank the you. Um, teacher, teacher moving allowances is 81318 on the budget mm -hmm. tracking report right. for the cost. So how, can you tell me offhand how many we had? Because it- How many? To, no. I because the contract says per diem and that, mm -hmm. that, that can vary somewhere from 200 to $400. Depending who he or As she is, teacher. right? Okay. Anything further? Thank you. Uh, we're going to move on to the consent agenda. Uh, all items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion. <coughs> there will be no separate discussion of these items unless a member of the committee so requests. In which event, the item will be considered in its normal sequence. Approval of warrant number one four one nine zero dated June 26, 2014, in the amount of $564,325.36. Warrant number 14197, dated July 10, 2014, backdated 6 14 in the amount of $616,915.90.
Warrant number 15014, dated August 7, 2014, in the amount of $611,038.48. Approval of draft minutes June 12th and June 26, 2014. So moved. Pull uh, 626. Pull uh, the minutes. The minutes? Yeah. Okay, fine. So we will be voting on everything at this time except uh, the draft minutes. Mr. Thielman made, uh, made the motion. Is there a second? Second. Any other further questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Now uh, I will entertain a motion for approval of draft minutes June. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. She's checking who, who wasn't there on the 26th, right? Mr. Hain has a tendency to rush through things, and we have to. Are we all here? I don't remember either, but we can. Were we all here on the 26th? Okay. Yeah. Oh, that was the famous. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh. We all set? Did you have a good time? In okay, Alan. <laughs> behave yourself. <laughs> I will entertain a motion at this time for approval of draft minutes. June 12th. No, June 26th. June 26th. 26. I'm sorry. 2014. So moved. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any abstentions? Yes. Mr. Pierce is abstaining. I want to say that was one of the best discussions we've ever had at a school committee meeting on the 26th. You missed it. Which it was a very good discussion. Yeah. All things. I mean, I don't mean, I don't mean to make feel built, but it was a good discussion. Yeah. We all set? I was on the losing end. I'm a good sport. You were in the losing end. Well, I guess I was. It, it, it was a tie. Yeah. Well, <laughs> okay. You always got it because I did the yeah, tie. Yeah, but a tie goes right. to the dark side. You know? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> well, okay. A little decorum here, as little as possible. Okay. okay. We're waiting right now. Yep. We're not going anywhere. Promise. Well, we can Is there a button we can push on this to... Uh, well, Oh, to vote electronically? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, you know. Oh, gosh. For a minute, Ms. Mm -hmm. Fitzgerald? Mm -hmm. We're going to just go on to committee reports right now. Is that okay? Let's go. We're on to committee reports, um, policies and procedures. Mr. Pierce. Not at this time. I will have something for you in a minute. Okay. Uh, budget, Ms. Starks. Community relations, Mr. Schlickman. Uh, nothing over the summer, but we will be looking to have a meeting pretty soon so we can start discussing surveys. Great. Facilities, Mr. Thielman. No report, and I need, I'm going to need some guidance from the superintendent on how the committee should go forward this year, because I need some clarity on that. Uh, special study group on superintendent's evaluation. I will be sending out a doodle to that group just so that we can all be on the same page for the evaluation this year and have a, uh, a consistent document. Um, the Novus agenda, I'd like to take correction, Mr. Jess. Case. I'm sorry. Uh, did I skip? Secretary mm -hmm. report. Correction. Curriculum instruction and assessment. I apologize. Nothing to report. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good summer. You got it. Well, okay. Now on to the Novus agenda. Uh, I would like you. You got a report from Adam Kurowski. Um, the board of selectmen uh, have voted to go with a contract for one year. Uh, we are not. Need, it's not necessary for us to vote this. The good news is. Novus Agenda normally charges school committees a fee and selectmen's a fee. Uh, thanks to Adam and his negotiations, it's one fee for as long as we have them. So we come in under the, uh, the selectmen have, uh, have voted this. Um, through the budget or? Not out of our budget. Not out of our budget. It's still out of the Arlington budget, but it's not out of our personal budget. That's the good news. I would like. The, uh, a very short discussion, if we can keep it short. If we need to have a uh, short-term committee or to assess this for people to discuss, or should we give it to one of the standing committees to look at? Uh, we had a, a slight setback in getting us all set up today. Uh, I hit the delete button and it disappeared. I don't know. These are minor things that go on. I've invited Adam to come, and I. I apologize to whoever the new chair is uh, to our last meeting uh, at the year to give a yearly report on, on the good, the bad uh, that has come out of this. 
and I didn't know if this subcommittee, having a subcommittee or having a, a standing committee uh, be compiling this thing. So I open that up for any discussion at this point or comments. Somebody, <clears throat> rather than the whole committee, somebody to, to collate information and things of that nature on, on uh, the things that we, that we might want to have for add-ons later on. One of the things that is not covered under the uh, contract is the electronic voting. And I think that was something we, we thought we might be interested in. And that's a $700 annual fee. It records everything, it's black and white, and it's like that. Can we, I mean, we would still have to take a voice vote because of the requirements of the law. We can't just vote electronically, I don't, I mean, unless it's being shown I, up on the screen. I, I have spoken, the, it, I spoke to Mr. Uh, Heim, the, Doug Heim, the council, on uh, a question on executive documents coming out. He said we can do that electronically. I will ask that and clarify that one way or the other. Whether we, I think we should, just for public, whether we bring it up and show the actual vote like they do at town meeting. I think we have to. Yeah. Either that or have we the have voice vote. vote. If we don't have the ability to project it right then and there. Uh, yeah, I, I would think the chair could announce the vote that it's unanimous or it's uh, it, the number it, or yeah. it's a 5-4 okay. vote with or it's a 6-1 vote with uh, we can ask a the member. Sec to, the yeah, secretary there's got to be a way to do it. Right. The secretary will have the, lo the final thing. We can ask the secretary. No, so, um, right. I think so. we should just, if you have any concerns, we can send them to Karen and okay. make a yeah. list. Yeah, fine. It, if, if that's okay. So, oh, the other idea is that we could have a committee, but it only meets once, say, before the meeting with Adam or something. Well, Just to sort of collate. If there's a need, it will, do, it will come up. We'll go with what Ms. Stark said. It, that's agreeable to the committee. And if there's a need that shows up, we'll discuss it again. Anything else at this time? Policies and procedures. Is well, that, thank you <laughs> for reminding me. Uh, we are required by, uh, to, to either change the existing agenda policy to reflect what we're doing here or create a new policy. Uh, I will be happy to talk to the Chair of Policy uh, from the language that I've got both from Adam and from uh, Town Council on that. Can, yes. I know it sounds like several people don't feel it needs to be discussed, but I do think at some point we should discuss whether we like doing electronic or not. And, and it needs to be in an Fine. open discussion, not just notes sent here and there. Okay. And, and, I agree. And, things well it's just we have that's yeah. one of the things this whole procedure has really been lacking is open communication between members in an open meeting setting then i think it's well, why don't we put it on the agenda the for, agenda next week. for the next okay. meeting for the 18th two weeks from now. Is that okay yeah so that will be thank you appreciate that well can we bring the fellow in who can talk about nobody? adam uh or is it necessary i i don't think he let me speak to let me speak let me speak to yeah, okay <laughs> Well, there's a well I'll, let me just state this. The only reason Mr. Good is here is Adam is on vacation. Mm -hmm. Adam is scheduled to be here for at least three, maybe more meetings in support of Karen. Oh, okay. So he will be here. Okay. Well, it'd be good to have the discussion yeah. with him here. Yeah. Ask all the questions we want. Have a big. So, so the questions don't have to be sent to him at a later date. Yeah, just okay. Great. Figure it out. Put 20 minutes on the agenda. And Sounds it good. Do we have anything for executive session? I move adjournment. Just oh. a second. <laughs> <laughs> you were like a. Well, you said. It. Breathe. Mm -hmm. Is there. I can't ask for me like this. Yeah. Move to I move to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.